The Karst, capitalized as a proper name here, is a region of approximately 440 square kilometers on the limestone Karst Plateau of southwestern Slovenia and above the Bay of Trieste. Located at the northern edge of the Adriatic Sea, it links the Mediterranean and Central Europe. Owing to the pioneering work in speleology and karst research that has been done in these parts, this region is referred to as the classical karst. Due to a favorable climate and the proximity of key trade routes, the karst was settled early. As early as the prehistoric era, people here made their living from pasture, agronomy and agriculture. The development of towns by the sea increased the need for wood, for heating and for shipbuilding. The increasing exploitation of forest resources resulted in the creation of large, barren areas. It is therefore not surprising that by the mid-19th century, Emperor Maximilian described Karst as a rocky desert. In order to restore life to the barren karst surface, some Austro-Hungarian foresters, among them some young Slovenian men educated in Graz and Vienna, succeeded with guidance of Josip Koller in the second half of the 19th century and following a number of unsuccessful attempts with reforestation efforts and planted the non-indigenous yet robust Austrian pine, Pinus nigra, thus returning forest to the over-exploited karst landscape. Under the guidance of local foresters, higher domestic labor force, raised seedlings in tree nurseries and later planted them on the assigned land with the assistance of village volunteers. Planted seedlings were protected against drought by means of stone mulch and against sheep, goats and cattle by means of capped dry walls that later served as fire protection walls. Field and forest wardens also contributed to the protection process. No fire threat existed at the time. Under Italian rule until World War II and later under Yugoslav rule, schools were systematically included in reforestation efforts. The forester who led the last reforestation action in the common karst was August Kafol, originally from Chepovan, and one of the last imperial and royal foresters, the Austro-Hungarian school from Graz, he was the classical image of the man who is master of space and everything going on around him. He was also a hunter by virtue of his work duties. He supported reforestation and found it very interesting since he was also schooled in agriculture. He was one forester who made a strong impact as regards agricultural expertise in this area. He collected and cultivated walnut species specially adapted to cost conditions, managed a fruit tree nursery, taught grafting in agriculture at night schools and was actively involved in the introduction of Swiss grey cattle with a hardest hoof, which was very important in view of the harsh conditions that prevailed in the area. Reforestation was carried out largely on hilly parts of the Karst Plateau, where the forest played a protective role. As a rule, these parts were the most remote, the rockiest and, above all, were intended solely for use as pasture and very rarely for haymaking and harvesting. Initially, local inhabitants agreed, though did not favor reforestation since it entailed the clearing of pastures. Only later, in the late stages of the program of the Austro-Hungarian reforestation of karst, were the trees also planted close to villages, in order to prepare the ground for more useful tree species which were to be planted in the future. As a result, serious disputes over this policy did arise with local inhabitants.
The systematic reforestation of the karst took place over the period 1859 till 1954. Due to abandoning of the agricultural line, intensive natural forest overgrowth began in the 1950s. Due to reforestation and overgrowth of abandoned agricultural land, the volume of forests in the karst region recorded a threefold increase between 1830 and 2000. According to foresters, the karst forest has been successfully restored. There exist, however, problems regarding its management, since the forest, with shrubbery advances at an amazing 17 meters per year, if this trend continues, it will completely overgrow the karst by 2013. In recent years, grazing sheep and goats, that are now returning to pasture over many years, have served to slow this overgrowth to some degree. At any rate, 90% of all fires that take place in the natural environment in Slovenia occur in the karst region. The reason for the high rate of fire is attributed, among other factors, to resinous confires that are non-indigenous as well as to increasingly protracted summer droughts. Fire sites are rehabilitated by cutting down damaged trees and only exceptionally when larger areas are involved by replanting and sowing seeds since due to drought, planting of seedlings is very likely to be unsuccessful. Visible on the recordings is the partially cleared fire site, which spread to 950 hectares of land, of which 710 hectares was covered with forest between 21st and 24th of July 2006. Restoration of fire sites is planned by foresters in cooperation with landowners. The cost of seedlings and seeds is entirely covered by the state. Forest owners can apply for financial assistance to cover work performed through the Slovenian Forest Service. In addition to forests, the soil's organic layer, which takes some 150 years to form, is often destroyed. Damage is largely ecological in nature which experts have not yet been able to assess precisely. In spite of reforestation and overgrowth, the view of the rocky karst surface after a fire strongly indicates that growth roots in the area are rooted on bare stone and not in the soil. The claims of the existence of large food stores for sheep and goats, as well as infinite fuel sources in the present-day karst, are therefore unfounded. In the cast, the green curtain that retains soil, cleans and retains water and restores vegetation growth on the landscape, creates the conditions for subsequent better and more sustainable agricultural use. The problem in the cast region is not overgrowing, but sound land management. The average size of all individually owned wooded land in the cast region amounts to a mere one hectare, the reason being a great inheritance-related land fragmentation. As a result, individual owners show no interest in the management of forests, which, after 150 years, are still not in optimal conditions. There are, however, signs of improvement. It appears that the plant pine forest would be replaced by the oak forest through natural processes and plant management of land use. Living on cast has never been easy. The conscience of people about vulnerable balance in rocky landscape resulted in knowledge and persistent restoration of cast. Today, we also have the knowledge and the power to live in harmony with nature. Let us protect it responsibly for our home in cast today and tomorrow.